Hi, my name is Mary Vukicevic and this presentation is about the classification of diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is a microangiopathy which shows features of microvascular occlusion and leakage. And you should be familiar with the signs of occlusion and leakage in the retina before you come to understand the pathogenesis and signs of diabetic retinopathy. So what happens to blood vessels in the presence of diabetes? Well, high blood sugar causes several things to occur in the blood vessels. These are capillaropathy, where the blood vessel walls degenerate, hematological changes, where you get deformity of blood cells and thickening of the blood, and then finally, microvascular occlusion, which is where you see irregular blood flow and decreased oxygen. I'm not going to talk more about diabetic retinopathy as a disorder uh, because that's been covered elsewhere. I'm going to launch straight into the different classification types of diabetic retinopathy. And these include background, maculopathy, pre-proliferative, proliferative, and then finally advanced diabetic eye disease. So let's start with background diabetic retinopathy. The signs of background DR are microaneurysms, retinal hemorrhages, macular edema, and heart exudates. And in the next few slides, I'm going to show you images and explain all of these signs. Microaneurysms are localized outpouchings of the capillary wall. So the capillary wall spreads out and in a certain area um, it thickens up and, and uh, it, it moves in an outward direction. So what can happen is these microaneurysms can leak plasma into the retina because the blood retinal barrier is broken down or thrombosed. And in the image here on the right, you can see these little outpouchings, little dots of microaneurysms coming out of these tiny, tiny little um, uh, blood vessels. So the signs include tiny little red dots, initially temporal to the fovea, which are the earliest signs of diabetic retinopathy. But they are hard to see when you're looking at the fundus, and they're actually more obvious during um, fundus fluorescein and geography and you can see here this image is of the eye that's had a, a fundus fluorescein angiogram and these tiny little specks are uh, microaneurysms. It's quite easy to get these confused with dot hemorrhages which are more easily seen on the retina because they're actually larger but they're quite similar. Here I'm showing you uh, retinal hemorrhages and hemorrhages can appear actually um, either in the retinal nerve fiber layer and these have a flame-like appearance or they can be intraretinal and located in the middle layers of the retina and have a red dot blot appearance. So these dot blot hemorrhages uh, can, uh, are a larger uh, version of microaneurysms that they look similar on the retina. The next sign of background diabetic retinopathy is macular edema and this is caused by extensive capillary leakage or leakage from microaneurysms and dilated capillaries and so what happens is fluid accumulates in the inner retinal layers and if the fluid accumulates um, under the fovea, the fovea can eventually develop a cystoid appearance and we call this cystoid macular edema. You can see the uh, retinal thickening and the cystoid spaces here in the, in the OCT scan in the top image here. This bottom image shows a fundus fluorescein angiogram of a patient with macular edema and it shows this typical flower-like pattern where the cysts fill up with fluorescein and have this sort of roundish appearance. And finally, the last sign of background diabetic retinopathy is hard exudates. 
these are caused by retinal edema and develop at the junction of normal and swollen retina. They're made up of lipoproteins and lipid-filled macrophages and they are waxy yellow color in appearance with distinct margins. You can see some here and some here and they're usually arranged in clumps or rings. See how they come in a clump or a ring shape around the um, retina and they're often surrounding microaneurysms. When the leakage stops occurring in the retina these can reabsorb but it can take months or years. Now this is just a reminder not to confuse hard exudates with cotton wool spots. Hard exudates are made up of lipids and they're very yellow in color and often found close to the macula. Um, they have distinct margins and they result from blood vessel leakage. Cotton wool spots on the other hand are made up of axonal debris and they're more prominent around the optic nerve where the nerve fiber layer is thickest and they're lighter or yellowy light colored yellow or white um, as opposed to the darker yellow of hard exudates and cotton wool spots are sort of billowy like clouds they don't have distinct margins and they result from vessel occlusion as, a, as opposed to um, uh, hard exudates which result from vascular leakage. The next category of diabetic retinopathy is maculopathy. Any edema, hard exudates or ischemia which involves the fovea is termed diabetic maculopathy. And this is the most common cause of vision impairment in diabetics, especially those with type 2 diabetes. There are a few different types of maculopathies. They're focal in one area, diffuse, spread all around, ischemic or um, clinically significant macular edema. I'm just going to describe clinically significant macular edema here because this is the most common clinically. And the photo shows, shown here is an image of a blurry macula with some dot blot hemorrhages and also hard exudates near it. So a thickened macula is um, e actually easier to, to detect on OCT. So you'll find that as an orthoptist, you'll be actually investigating any diabetic vision loss with an OCT on a regular basis. And here you can see thickened retina and maculopathy um, here is we've got actually oedema here because um, it, it's causes swelling and these cystic spaces to occur. The next category of retinopathy is pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Any background diabetic retinopathy that shows signs of imminent proliferative disease is what we term pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy or PPDR and the clinical signs indicate that there is a progressive retinal ischemia occurring. Signs include cotton wool spots, intraretinal microvascular abnormalities or IRMA, and vein and artery changes and dark blot hemorrhages. The risk of actually progressing to proliferative diabetic retinopathy depends on the number of lesions seen on the retina. And you can actually have proliferative disease in one eye and pre-proliferative in the other. Now we already know about um, cotton wool spots. I've described these before, but over the next few slides, I'm going to show you Irma, vessel changes and dark blot hemorrhages. Here we see intraretinal microvascular abnormalities or IRMA as they're commonly termed. And they're fine irregular red lines that run from the arteries to the venules. And you can see them here. They're intraretinal and they don't cross over ma any major retinal vessels. When you see these tiny changes in the vasculature, this is an indication that um, it's pre-proliferative 
diabetic retinopathy and may progress to proliferative. Venous changes are also common in pre-proliferative DR and venous changes include things like dilated and tortuous veins. So here there's a picture of a dilated vessel. Looping is shown on the image up here, looping blood vessels. Beading is, is also where you um, can see little bead-like structures um, where the vessels be, start to look like little beads and sausage-like segmentation where the vessel looks like a string of sausages. Artery changes in pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy include peripheral narrowing of the arteries, something called silver wiring where it looks like silver wire has been inserted into the um, artery itself and then complete obliteration where it's actually missing and completely blocked and there's as you can see in this image there's no blood getting through to this um, vessel at all. And finally here we have dark blot hemorrhages which are hemorrhagic retinal infarcts and they're found in the middle retinal layers and they're just basically exactly as described dark blot hemorrhages bleeding into the retina. The next classification of DR is proliferative diabetic retinopathy and in this classification you see neovascularization, rubiosis and neovascularization at the disc as signs. So let's have a look at neovascularization first. This affects about 5 to 10 percent of diabetics and type 1 diabetics are most at risk with 60% of them having proliferative diabetic retinopathy after 30 years of having the disease. And the primary feature is neovascularization in proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So when you hear that a patient has proliferative diabetic retinopathy, it's most likely that they also have signs of neovascularization. This is caused by angiogenic growth factors um, increased by hypoxic retinal tissue in an attempt to revascularize the hypoxic retina. So what happens is the, there's lack of um, oxygen coming into the retina and in an attempt to try and bring more oxygen in, these vascular endothelial growth factors kick in and they create these new blood vessels and neovascularization. The problem with the um, new blood vessels is that they are irregular, they're um, not formed well, they're fragile, and then they burst and leak. The sign of neovascularization is this mottled mess of very fine blood vessels seen on the retina. What you have to remember is that it's very easy to look into the eye and see the um, vasculature of the retina. But don't forget that this problem is potentially occurring all around the patient's body. It's just that you're able to visualize it uh, by looking into the eye. Rubiosis uh, occurs with proliferative diabetic retinopathy and rubiosis is just simply also neovascularization, but it's neovascularization at the iris. As you can see there, new blood vessels growing in through the iris and this is definitely not a normal state of affairs. And then the other place that you can get neovascularization is at the optic disc. So um, this is described as NVD, neovascularization at the disc. If you see the term NVE, um, in a patient's file, that stands for neovascularization elsewhere, and that means it's neovascularization occurring somewhere in the retina, not at the disc. Neovascularization at the disc is NVD. And you can see here in this photo, you can barely see the optic disc there because this mottled mass of uh, new blood vessels is, is covering it. Here it's not so bad, there's just a little, little area of neovascularization occurring here. And then the final category of diabetic retinopathy is advanced diabetic eye disease. And in advanced diabetic 
eye disease, it, this is in, indicative of a serious complication of diabetic retinopathy, which, in which affects the vision. And it can occur in patients who have not had treatment or if treatment has not been successful. And these um, signs of advanced diabetic eye disease and their complications include things like hemorrhage. And you can see this extensive hemorrhage that's occurring here in this patient's eye. There's the optic disc and this is the entire peripheral retina. Uh, and the macula is around here somewhere and it's a it's a it's an awful state of affairs because they um, they're, they're going to lose quite a bit of vision here. Patients can also uh, develop tractional retinal detachments and in this image here we can see um, there's a ring of uh, retina which has been pulled away um, and pulled upwards as a result of um, a stiffening up process and an and advanced diabetic eye disease. Patients can also develop uh, rubiosis, which I showed you in the previous image, and something called tractional retinoschisis too. So this is quite a severe form of, uh, of diabetic retinopathy, the final stages of diabetic eye disease.